Hey guys, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. So we finished deflection by integration in the previous videos in this course, and now we're going to move on to superposition. So some may say, you know, superposition is easier, there's not as many numbers, uh, but, you know, it's it depends on what you like to do, calculation, or you like to do things visually, okay? And some people have a lot of problems with superposition because there are some tricks, but if you can practice and get all these cases down, then you shouldn't have a problem with this. So let's start with just, just a brief introduction of what superposition is. Essentially what we're going to be doing is, I'm gonna put this table here for you, okay? Is, I'm sorry if you can't see it, if the publisher allows us, we're gonna go ahead and put a link to this in, uh, below and you'll be able to take a look at this. If not, just pause the video and put it on another screen and put this table up so you can watch while we're doing it, okay? Because I, we can't really zoom in, it looks a little bit blurry. So there's the table, all right? And what we're going to do with this table is we're gonna break up our beam, our original beam here, okay? Into different sections according to the external loads and we're going to choose cases from this table here and we're going to apply them to the beam to find the deflection. So I'll, I'll move that for now and let's talk about what the question's asking, okay? So we're given our E and our I, our moment of inertia and our modulus of elasticity, okay? Those are given. If you remember in the deflection video by integration, those weren't given, those were constant. In this case, they are. So what we're gonna do is, we'll, we'll sub those in later when we're, finding the inter, or when we're finding the deflection. So the question asks us to find the deflection between B and C at the midpoint. Okay, not the maximum, the middle point between B and C. Okay, so 2.5 meters from either side. So let's begin. Let's take a look, whenever we're solving a superposition problem, we wanna break up the beam into its external loadings. Okay, so don't worry about the reactions in superposition, we don't need to find those, but we do need to identify what is being loaded onto the beam. Okay, so in this case, we have an eight kilonewton force, all right, and that's acting downwards at A and we have a four kilonewton per meter distributed load between B and C and it's five meters long, okay? So those are our two cases, all right? And what we're going to do is we're gonna to refer to the table, okay? And we're gonna break that up. And what I like to do is I like to visually draw each case. That helps me then draw what's called the elastic curve and then I can visually see each part of the beam and make sure I didn't forget anything. So what do I mean by the elastic curve? Well, the elastic curve is kind of an imaginary line of what the beam would look like if it was deflected. So for example, in this part here, all right, since this distributed load is pushing down on the beam and there's nothing, you know, reacting with it on the other side, the beam is gonna deflect, okay? And the beam is gonna deflect in this kind of shape here, okay? It's gonna look like a little bit of a, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a parabola down here, a little bit of an arc, and it's gonna, and, and what the elastic curve is, is it, it's, kind of an exaggerated shape, okay? It's, it's, it's an exaggeration. The beam isn't gonna deflect that much, but it helps us visually see what the deflection looks like. And that's important for determining whether or not the beam will deflect upwards or downwards. And that would be the sign convention, okay? So let's get started. And I've gone to the table, okay? And I've taken this distributed load here as our first case, okay? And I've labeled that case seven because it's K7 in the table, okay? So take a look at the table and you'll see what I mean by that. And in the table, we have a maximum deflection and we see that the maximum deflection happens at X equals L over two, okay? So what that means is the length of this beam from, from B to C, the section of the beam, L over two would be 2.5 meters, okay? And that's exactly where we want to solve for, right? 2.5 and 2.5 meters. That's our midpoint, and that's what the question's asking for. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that equation, we're gonna write it here to the right. And it's a negative sign because I've drawn the elastic curve here, okay? And as we can see, the, the beam is deflecting downwards, okay? So downwards is gonna be considered a negative deflection, okay? So we've gone ahead and we've written out the equation, and that's it, we're done for that case, okay? That's super simple. Now let's move on to the next case, okay? So this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Case eight, we have a moment, okay? So we have a moment created by this force, all right? So this force, as we can see, isn't directly deflecting the beam here, but this force is creating a moment on the support at B, and that moment is going to cause the beam to deflect 
in this direction. So, so the, the moment here is causing the beam to deflect in this manner here. So if, if you need to use you know, your, your hand maybe to see which way the beam would be deflecting, go ahead, don't be embarrassed. And what that's going to cause a positive deflection here, okay? That's a positive deflection, all right? So we're gonna go to our table, all right? And we're going to take the equation, right? For the middle point of case eight, all right? Simple as that, so that's all we need to do. And what we need to consider here is the sign, okay? So in the table, the, the sign is given as a negative. However, in the table, it, the moment is going in the other direction. So don't look at the sign in the table, just draw your case, draw your elastic curve, and then look at the point of concern and see where the deflection is going. Is it deflecting up or is it deflecting down? So in this one it was deflecting down, this one it's deflecting up, so we just assign the sign based on our drawing, not on the table, okay? Because that's the main way, place that you're gonna make a mistake. So now that we have our two cases and that's it for this beam, we, we dealt with this force and we dealt with this distributed load, we can just start to plug in numbers. So we can say that the deflection, we'll say the V at BC, okay, is equal to, and we're going to, first, well, let's use case seven. So we have negative five, okay? And what is our W? Okay, well, our W refers to the value of the distributed load, which is four kilonewtons per meter, okay? So let's change that kilonewtons into newtons. So we're gonna say that's times a thousand, so that's 4,000, right? And what's the length of the beam that we're dealing with? Okay, well, it's five meters, right? And that's to the power of four, and that is all over, okay, 384. Now, what's our E value? Okay, our E value is 200 GPA, okay? So that's 200 times, we're gonna, 10 to the nine, we're gonna turn that into PA, which is Newton over meter squared. All right, and let's extend that. And we have our moment of inertia. Now we just need to clear up the units, right? We have everything in meters here so far, and this is in millimeters. So we're going to change this to meters to the fourth, okay? So that is going to be 90 times 10 to the negative six, okay? And we just need to compute that, but first we need to consider case eight, all right? so. We made sure that we carried the negative sign. Let's take the positive from this one, all right? Now, what's our moment? Well, our moment is eight kilonewtons down times the distance to point B, okay? So it's eight, right, times 2.5, all right? And that's going to create a 20 kilonewton meter moment at point B, okay? That's how I got that. So let's sub that value in, right? We're gonna change it to newtons, so we're gonna have 20,000. That's gonna be times the length, okay? So the length we're dealing with here is five meters, right? Five meters. And that's squared over 16. And once again, we're just gonna plug in EI. If you wanna factor out EI and move it outside the equation, that's fine, but I'll just write it twice here. 200 times 10 to the nine, okay? And sorry, I ran out of room here, guy. 90 times 10 to the negative six, okay? So that's multiplied. And all we need to do is just put this in our calculator and we found the deflection at BC, okay? So the deflection at BC, all right, is equal to, and I just changed it to millimeters, guys, because, you know, uh, deflections are usually a very small amount. And I, you know, you can just change it to meters, multiply by a thousand, and you don't have to, you know, write in five or six zeros or something like that. And we're also going to include the direction, okay? Because this is gonna give us a negative number, all right? So what we wanna do is, we, we don't need to include the negative, all right? But we do need to include the direction, okay? So we're going to say that the deflection is downward. And there we go, that is our deflection at point BC, which is the midpoint between these two supports. Come back for the next video and we're going to solve for the deflection at A. Thanks for watching.